welcome back to What Each NBA Team Needs. This episode is all about the Charlotte Hornets. The Hornets are definitely a lottery team and currently are placed with the 8th pick best odds. Obviously in the lottery they could end up with the first pick, you don't really know, but we're basing this off of just their odds at the 8th pick. And what they need with the 8th pick is basically everything except a point guard. They've got two good point guards, I wouldn't say either of them are really like all-star starting quality, but they're definitely solid point guards, that's not their main position they need to improve. And with that being said, it brings us to our first prospect, Daniel Oturu. Now if you've seen any of my past videos, you will know that I am so high on this kid, and I am so confident that he will be one of the best players coming out of this draft. And if he is available at pick eight, which all of the draft boards have him available, they need to pick him. Daniel Atu is a center out of Minnesota who averaged 20 points per game and 11 rebounds on over 56% shooting from the field. This kid has a tremendous feel for the game. He is athletic, he is quick, he has great footwork, great defense. He is working on his jump shot and he really knows that he needs to improve it. He understands the game, he understands spacing. I mean, this is just a guy that his basketball IQ is tremendous, as well as his talent level. It's really just astounding what this guy has been able to accomplish. I have an entire video on Daniel Oturu called Daniel Oturu Deep Dive. Go watch that if you want to know more. There's interviews from his coaches and everything. This is a fantastic kid. This is a fantastic pick. The Charlotte Hornets really could use a better center. Obviously, they have P.J. Washington. I'd say he's probably more of a power forward at his height. You want to plug Daniel O'Toole into the center position and then put, you know, Miles Bridges or P.J. Washington outside. That just creates a great, like, Lob City type of vibe with Devontae Graham. I mean, that, that is just a fantastic pairing. I really think this would be a great pick. It would really take Charlotte's defense and offense to the next level. James Wiseman is my second best prospect on this list. This is a guy who obviously we got to see a very short glimpse of him in his NCAA career with all the corruption stuff and, you know, he technically getting some help financially from his team. However, James Wiseman is still a fantastic player and I personally do not fault him whatsoever in terms of like a personality by accepting help from his coach and his school. You know, I, I just think that the NCAA really should loosen up on those rules. I personally think that they're stupid. But James Wiseman, he is definitely a good player, and we're talking about him. James Wiseman averaged 19.7 points per game during his college season and over 10.7 rebounds. He shot 76.9% from the field. I mean, that that is insane for a center for any player. He is 7-1, he's another center for the Hornets, and this guy is great. He is athletic, just like the Hornets like, he is quick. I mean, this is a guy with extreme defensive prowess, he has a lot of potential. I really love this player, I really love this pick for the Charlotte Hornets, I think he'd be a great fit for them. However, it's just knowing if he'll drop to 8 or not, that's really difficult to say. Some people have him dropping because they only got to see a short glimpse of him in college, some people still have him up in the top three. You never know. Maybe he'll drop to eight. And if he does, they should take him. And I know I said not a point guard. However, there is still Cole Anthony, one of my favorite prospects. Now, listen, some people are really hating on Cole Anthony in my comment section. However, Cole Anthony, I have seen him play live multiple times. I have watched so much in-depth tape on this kid. And there is not a single doubt in my mind he is going to be a NBA All-Star at some point. I will say he should be moved to the shooting guard position if he goes to Charlotte. His passing is not to the level that Devontae Graham, that Devontae Graham has. I mean, Devontae Graham was in the top five assist leaders this season. I mean, he's phenomenal. And by the way, the Hawks picked him with like, I don't know, like the 47th pick a year ago. And I loved him coming out of Kansas. And then they traded him and I was super sad. And now look where we are. He almost beat Trey Young in assists. But that's not the point. That's just one of my favorite predictions I've ever made. And it was so, so damn accurate. So, Cole Anthony. Fantastic scorer. So athletic. You, If you watch him play in person, you can really just see 
how much of a great ball player he is. Cole Anthony is a phenomenal player. He is athletic. He's a great shot. He's a good rebounder. I mean, he can really just slash and cut to the basket. This is a guy that you put the ball in his hands and you're getting a bucket almost every time. I think with the Charlotte Hornets offense, if you just put him beside Scary Terry or Devontae Graham, he will kill it in Charlotte. He's staying in North Carolina. I mean, it's just sort of a hometown, but not a hometown, obviously, he's from New York. But it's like he's staying in the same area. He doesn't have to worry about buying a new home, getting adjusted to the climate or anything. He is there. He is a plug and play. He's ready to work. I would love it if Charlotte ended up with Cole Anthony. And in round two, Charlotte has the 32nd pick, which is a pick I really like because I haven't been able to analyze the second round or the top of the second round very much through these lists so far. So Charlotte with the 32nd pick in this upcoming NBA draft should take Elijah Hughes out of Syracuse. This guy has made almost every single list I have made for this series on what each team needs and what each team should take. Elijah Hughes is one of my draft sleepers. He is great. 6'6", out of Syracuse, 19 points per game, 4.9 rebounds, 3.4 assists. I mean, you're really not looking for his assist or his rebound numbers. He's a shooting guard slash small forward player. He gets buckets. I think he's a guy that really fits into Charlotte's, I mean, the, like the people they've drafted in the past. He really fits into the kind of players that they like. Obviously, the Charlotte Hornets organization is very dysfunctional and they really don't know what they're doing, so they don't really have a model player that they like to go for. But Elijah Hughes is a guy that seems to be like what they've been picking up recently. He's a great player, 42.6% from the field with a great three-point shot. He is quick. He has good defense. This is just a guy who works tremendously hard, and he's a great player. I really love his game. I think he will be a fantastic NBA player for years to come. I am huge on Elijah Hughes, and I really hope that he goes to a good NBA team that will utilize him. Next up is the man with the story, Jay Scrub, the guy who wants to be the first NBA player ever drafted out of a JUCO, and he is going to do it this year, and that is a fact. He is 6'6", out of, honestly, I can't even remember the school's name because it's not really that important. Averaging 20.2 points per game, 8.9 rebounds, and over 54% shooting from the field. He is a phenomenal scorer, just a great player. I really think this would, he's a shooting guard uh, slash point guard, but obviously when you're at a Juco, anybody who's half decent can be your point guard. Doesn't even matter, you know, if they're good at passing or not. Jay Scrub, really, you look at those numbers and you think, well, he was playing at a Juco, but really what you got to look at is you got to look at 54% shooting. That's fantastic. I mean, you can put your, just imagine yourself in any gym against any defender. It's hard to shoot 54%. I mean, if you're just shooting around on a goal outside your house, it's hard to shoot 54% from the field. But Jay Scrub did it. Jay Scrub is a guy who does attempt more three-pointers than you would think based on that shooting percentage, and he hits them. He's a great three-point shot. He's a great slasher. He has great athleticism. I would say he can improve his defense a bit. He has really good rebounding though. I mean, he knows how to crash a board. Jay Scrub is a guy that you draft because you want scoring, because you want someone who plays with a ton of heart and passion, but you also draft him for the story, you know? The Hornets franchise really needs some good publicity, and Jay Scrub is a lot like Taco Fall, you know? You draft him because he's a fan favorite, but I really think Jay Scrub can be an NBA starting caliber player and a fan favorite. And third for their second pick in the draft is Tyler Bay. This is a guy who is questionably going to be here. I mean, I've seen him bouncing all over draft boards, but ESPN does have him ranked somewhere around here, which is why I have him on this list. 6'7 out of Colorado, only 13.8 points per game, 9 rebounds. He's more of a role player, but he plays his role very well. Obviously, 9 rebounds is a great stat. 53% shooting, so he gets his shots to fall when he gets shots. This is a guy that I think, again, really fits the kind of player that Charlotte likes drafting. He's athletic. He can rebound very well. He's quick. I mean, Charlotte really likes to push the pace with their game. They really like athletic guys. 
and Tyler Bay certainly fits that. I mean, he's, he's already standing at 6'7", but he has a great vertical. Tyler Bay is a good scorer. He's a good rebounder. I just think he's a player that has a lot of polish on his game. He probably won't explode into an NBA star, but he won't fall into like a G League bench player. This is a guy who is a good bench player. He's going to be reliable in the NBA. And really, Charlotte needs reliable right now. And with their last pick in the draft, pick 56, the Charlotte Hornets should take John Petty Jr. out of Alabama. Now, I actually think that this section is the exact same as my last video uh, on the Brooklyn Nets, like these next three guys. So if you watch that video, basically it's the same thing. John Petty Jr. coming in at the number one spot. I think whatever team takes this guy is going to be super happy with their pick. Six, he's standing at 6'5", 14.5 points per game, 6.6 .6 rebounds, and over 44% shooting from the three-point line. I know you look at him and you're like, that's a guy who likes to slash. He's a speedster, right? He's probably, he probably has insane dunk reels. No, this is a guy who shoots 44% from three. He is a great shot. I just think that you cannot underestimate that shooting percentage. And really in the NBA these days, shooting percentage is everything. John Petty Jr. will be a great scorer in the NBA. And on a team like Charlotte, I think he really has the chance to flourish. I would love it if he was still there for Charlotte at this pick, and I would love it if they picked him. Next up is Skylar Mays, 6'4 out of LSU. I love all players out of LSU, even though I don't even like the school that much. I just think they consistently turn out good basketball players. 6'4, 16.7 points per game, five rebounds, 49% from the field. This is a shooting guard player who has a great three percentage, almost 40%, fantastic player. I mean. He is really clutch in my opinion, and he provides a lot of leadership, I think. This is a guy who really could organize that second unit for Charlotte. He could really step up their game coming off the bench. I think he'd be a great bench scorer for Charlotte. You know, that's something that they kind of struggle with. That's something a lot of NBA lottery teams do struggle with is bench scoring and bench leadership. So I think Skylar Mays would be a guy who can really add that to them. I mean, obviously they have a bench point guard, whether it is Devontae Graham in your opinion or Scary Terry but I think Skylar Mays would make a great addition to that second unit and a great scorer. Lastly is Isaiah Joe, 6'5", out of Arkansas, 16.9 points per game, four rebounds, 36.7% field goal percentage, which is why he's so low on this list. This is a guy that I really think has a ton of potential, you know, a very Pascal Siakam type player. I think he has good moments at times and he also has bad moments there's a lot of rough but there's also a lot of shine here i really like isaiah joe's game i like the way he plays he plays with a lot of passion he's a 6-5 shooting guard which is very good height wise i mean this is a guy who's athletic i just think he has so much potential maybe you develop him in the g league for a bit i mean we are talking about the 56th pick in the draft here you're normally not exactly going to get an nba starter but I think Isaiah Joe would make a very interesting potential pick here. You put him in the G League, you let him develop, maybe he turns out very well. I think he has some of the highest potential out of anybody available at this later pick. It's a very hard pick to make, but let me know what you think, I, uh, how I did on this entire list and with this pick. Hopefully you think I did well. Charlotte fans, let me hear it in the comments down below. You already know. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, please.